In today's tutorial, we're going to deal with a JavaScript problem that has to do with analyzing a string. We will create a function that will accept a string and a character and then return an array that contains the index of all occurrences for that particular character. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. Remember, you can use script to get free courses. So there are a few ways one could interpret gathering the index position for a character in a string. Some may want to find the indexes for a string of characters. That is a little bit different problem than what I'm planning to solve, which is for a single character. Solving for a single character is not too difficult. Since strings are iterable, we can easily convert the string to an array and then examine the characters in that array. This could be done with a for loop, but I'm going to be using the reduce method of arrays. So let's jump into it. So here's the string we'll use an example, four score and seven years ago, and I'm gonna pass in a, an E character once I get this function done. And so that's what we're gonna be checking. So first off, let's set up this function. I'm going to just call it get index of character. I'll be very specific about what the function does. And we want to receive a string. That's the string we're going to analyze. And we also want to receive a character. That's the character we're going to check for inside of the string. So there is our function. Now let's go ahead and write a statement down here for calling that. We're going to set the re results to an array here. And let's pass in the string and the letter E. That's what we'll be doing. Okay, so now we know what we've got to, to work with here. So first little trick. What I'm going to do first is create a temp array of the string. And here's how we can do that. It is a simple matter of setting up that array using the spread operator on the string. And that will spread that out into its individual characters. And so each individual character will be an element in the array. Now, if you're not familiar with the spread operator, I'll include a link in the description for a tutorial I've done on that. So that's the first trick, getting it into an array. So now we have an array of characters from this string. All right, now one other thing I want to do, I could just do this all within the reduce method, but sometimes I think when we put too much stuff together into something, it's harder to read, it's harder to reason about. So I'm gonna do this on a separate line. I just want to convert, whoops, convert the character to lowercase. And that's because when I'm comparing, I want both the element from the array and the character passed in to be lowercase. I want to just make sure that it's lowercase. All right. Now we can go ahead and do the meat of our function here. I'm going to return the results of this reduce method. Now the reduce method needs to act on the temp array. So we do dot reduce like this. Now the reduce method expects a function. And that function is going to act on each element in the array. As reduce cycles through the array, it will pass in each element. And it will pass it into that function. Now, that function should not only accept the element, but it also needs to accept an accumulator value. So when we're using reduce, the end result is an accumulator value. It's something that we've combined together. We've reduced this array into something, and that's what gets returned. Well, our accumulator value is going to be an empty array because we want to return an array of indexes. So it'll be an empty array and we'll add to it. So let's set up that function. I'm going to use an arrow function here. If that's still new to you, I can link to a tutorial on those. And I want to have a variable here for the accumulator value, which is going to be the results. It's going to be an array of all the index positions. Then I need to have a variable for the element. As the reduce method cycles through the array, each element, in this case, each character, will be placed in 
to that variable. So that's the second variable that I include for this function. And then I also want to include a third variable. And this is an optional one that doesn't always get used with the reduce method, but I'm going to be using it. And that's the index position. So I want the index position of that element as well, because that's what I'm going to be storing in the array. All right, now, what do we have this function do? Well, let me put a space there. We're going to convert the element to lowercase because I want to compare them both in lowercase. And then we're going to see if that's equal to the character. That's the first thing we're going to do. The character that's passed in, it's already been converted to lowercase. All right. Now we're going to use a ternary operator here. Works really well when working with the reduce method I found. I have found. And if that is true, what do we want to do? Well, we want to return an array. And what is that array going to consist of? Well, it's going to consist of whatever was returned before. Remember, this accumulator value has the results from the last time through the last element. And so we want to make sure that's included in the array in case some index positions have already been added to the array. And so we can spread that out like that. We use the spread operator again. We spread that out and include that in the array. And then a comma and the new index position. That's what we want to have in our array. Now, what if that is false? What if it evaluates to false, that they're not equal to one another? In that case, we just want to return the accumulator value so it's available for the next iteration, all right? So there's our function. Now, the reduce method takes a function as the first parameter, and we've got that function set up, which is what that is right there, but it also takes a second parameter, and that's the initial value of the accumulator. Since we want that to be an array, our initial value will be an empty array like that. All right. So there we have it. That should solve our problem for us. This reduce method is going to return the accumulator when it's all done, which will be an array of index positions. That will get returned from the function. And so that should end up in our results variable there. Let's go ahead and save that and we'll refresh and let me just open the console here and I'm going to enter results. 9, 16, 18, 22. Let's just double check that. Pretty sure that's right, but we're going to double check it anyway. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 is the first E and then 16... I think it said, and then 18, yeah. So yeah, that is working for us. That's able to find those characters and returns their position within the original string. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I try to release a new tutorial as often as I can. And once again, Thanks for watching.